Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. In this video, I'm here to talk to you again about the events processing system enhancements in the Vancouver release of ServiceNow. Now, I did another video. I'll link to it up above right here showing the events dashboard. We're going to start there just so you see it. So if you go to your all menu, type in system events and look for system events and jobs dashboard. I did kind of an overview showing the dashboard, but now I've been diving further deep into it to see um, how I can use this. This is my dev instance or my PDI instance. So you can see I have no event processing alerts. I'm going to switch to a work instance and show you how um, this might look in a different environment. So let's go ahead and go to system events and jobs dashboard. That'll open up in a new tab. And you see here I've got two event processing alerts. This is what I want to talk to you about today. Um, because I'm learning about this and there seems to be some new features plus some old features uh, that Justin is bringing Justin up to speed on how this stuff works. Let's take a look at these two event processing alerts. I have two of them, like I said, a long running event handler in the default queue. So I had to learn what the queues were and the default queue average processing duration um, is greater than a thousand milliseconds. So if I hover over that, you can see um, what that actually, let me try hovering again. Uh, Let's try hovering again. There we go. It's greater than 1,000 milliseconds. So my first question was, well, how big of a deal is that? That's one second. It's greater than one second. Why is that such a big deal? Well, let's go to the event log. Uh, type in event log. And this will bring us to a menu here for system policy events event log. And let's take a look at the event log. We've got um, quite a few events there happening. It's going to show different queues and stuff. And you can see, look at the processing duration there behind my head. In fact, let me move my head from zero milliseconds to a couple hundred milliseconds. I was like, oh, okay, this is shouldn't be taking that long. So let's just filter then and show uh, where the processing duration is greater than a thousand milliseconds. So it is greater than 1000. We'll run that and we see that there still are some events, uh, 249 of them to be exact, that are greater than a thousand milliseconds. But let me show you what's unique about that. Notice that they are in their own queues. So we've got flows or the flow engine. We've got here the uh, AI search index, text indexing. So let's go ahead now and group this by queue and we'll see all the different queues that might be set up for greater than a thousand milliseconds. There we've got um, AI search, auto resolution, flow engine, generate order queue, and text index. And then we have 31 of these that are just in the default queue. And wow, look at that. It's the same uh, or mostly the same event as what was showing up in my alert, this PA job, um, that a PA job data collection ended in okay, it ended okay. So DC equals data collection. So let's go back to that alert. Here's that same event that is flagging um, in my alerts as long running and um, the processing duration is uh, default queue average is greater than a thousand milliseconds. So I know I need to fix this, but I wanted to learn more about it. So that's why I went and looked at the event log and I said, well, what is creating these alerts? Who configured these? So again, I went back here to my all menu and let's type in system policy. And in the all menu now, we have a new option for configure alerts. This is what I believe is new in Vancouver. So if we go to the configure alerts menu item, we'll see that there's five of these sitting here now. Um, I don't know. I didn't put these here. Um, this is a demo environment. In fact, let's go back to my PDI that is not a demo environment. Let's see if those exist there. In fact, I did not check that. So we'll go to system policy and we'll go to the same menu item for alerts and configure alerts there. We'll go to configure alerts. Let's see if those same default ones are there. They are. There's five of them there. Okay. So this doesn't have the demo stuff that partner instances can have. So I know it's not unique to my demo environment. So let's go back to my demo environment. The first thing I did when I went in here is I went, well, who set these up and what do they look like? So you can see default queue average lag time threshold alert and there's the conditions. Um, that's not the one that triggered an alert. So let's go to, there's the one greater than a thousand milliseconds, the average event processing duration. So it seems like ServiceNow is pretty intentional about setting this up. And the only way that I was going to see these if I logged in and went to the system event monitoring dashboard. But I noticed when I was looking at these that there is a watch list. And so the first thing I did is I went and put myself on the watch list for all of these uh, configure alerts. So if you look there on the right hand side, 
there's Justin Meadows set to the watch list. So now I'm going to get an email notification, I believe, we'll cross my fingers, um, that there's one of these alerts has been triggered. Now I know how to create a new alert. And in the next video you're going to see, I'm going to show you my first response to an alert. And that is going to be to offload that data collection to its own queue. So look out for that other video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in fine tuning their event processing in their ServiceNow instance. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.